Good afternoon, YouTube, and welcome back once again to the Fat Cat Collections. Today, guys, I want to do a quick kind of uh, review slash unboxing of uh, a cell phone I just got. And this is the brand new uh, Celero 5G by Boost Mobile or through Boost Mobile. Uh, so, uh, what do I think about this phone? Guys, I absolutely love this phone. Now, I am coming from uh, several different phones. If you are not a Boost subscriber, um, uh, subscriber or a, a customer, um, I would check it out. If you are in the market for um, a really affordable cellular company, um, I would definitely give them a go. I know I've done a couple of videos on Boost Mobile in the past, uh, you know, about the service being a little hit or miss. It just depends on where you live. And I'll tell you that I'm glad that at least Boost Mobile did do an updated map for my location. So I remember, when you have things, when you check service areas on their maps, they're never 100%. So for instance, my coverage, uh, even through numerous calls to them trying to figure out what the problem was, uh, my coverage for voice and data is kind of poor where I live. Now, if you were to look on their original map, it shows good coverage, you know. Uh, since then, they've increased the, uh, I guess, the accuracy of their maps. And now, around only my house and my parents' street, it goes from great to good. I will tell you that good makes a huge difference when it comes to the reliability of your network. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, if you are buying a phone and looking at the Boost Mobile, uh, check their map before you're buying it and look at where you're going to be mainly using it. Um, inside the house is pretty important for me. Doesn't mean I wouldn't still go with them. I still, for the price, 35 bucks a month for pretty much unlimited everything. Totally worth it. I can't imagine why anybody would spend hundreds of dollars a month for a cell phone bill. Okay, you text. Uh, so just kind of keep that in mind. Um, you know, a lot of times, you know, people think like these prepaid services uh, are, are just really poor, and it's really not the case. Right now, Boost Mobile, uh, they were, they did, uh, they, I was under the Virgin name, and then Boost bought Virgin, so uh, their network's pretty huge. Now, I don't know if Boost is actually not using Sprint Towers anymore, but they are using T-Mobile, and I believe T-Mobile acquired Sprint. Don't quote me on that. I could be wrong, but they are using T-Mobile Towers now, uh, so you know you do get pretty good coverage, and despite the fact that I have a little bit of a dead spot around my house and my folks' house, uh, the phones, you know, I have Wi-Fi. My folks have Wi-Fi like most people. So it's not really a big deal for me. Uh, but just kind of keep that in mind. So um, I've gone through many phones over the years. Um, one of the phones is not here, but I went through. Uh, I've always been a really big fan of LG phones. I have one of their older LG phones here. I don't, I don't remember which one this is. Uh, and all these phones still work. Uh, then I, Mainly, the reason for upgrading was for more RAM, processor power, and uh, more cores, and, of course, the screen. So I upgraded to the ZTE Max. Still a great phone. I keep it as a backup. Uh, then I went up to the LG. I'm sorry. I went to no. I went to the LG Stylo. I think this is the Stylo Four. Uh, still a fantastic phone. Uh, this is one of the few phones by LG and by most manufacturers that um, I believe is water. I don't want to say waterproof, but pretty water resistant. Uh, this kind of a phone I used to take with me on the boat. Uh, when you know your hands are kind of wet and stuff like that, it's raining. Uh, this phone does have some IPX ratings to it, so keep that in mind. Uh, and then, of course, I went to the ZT Max. After that, uh, I'm, I'm only showing you guys so I give you guys an idea of you know some of the phones I've had. Then I went up to the uh, what is this thing here? This is the Cool Pad, the Cool Pad Max or Cool Pad Legacy, I think. They still have this phone. Then after that, I went up to my favorite phone of all time, my LG Stylo Six. Uh, this phone worked great till one day, the other day I plugged it in. If you guys have any information on what could be the problem, let me know. I wouldn't mind, you know, it's still working, but um, this phone is awesome. And if you, I mean, just everything about it, super well made, just feels great in your hands. Um, this phone, I plugged it in, worked totally fine. Uh, Use the same charger, same cord, same everything I've been using for, for a couple of years. Plugged it in, woke up to the phone just being non-responsive. So uh, when you plug it in, nothing happens. I don't know if the phone died. And hopefully it's something simple like maybe the power adapter got destroyed. I don't I don't know. But if you got, I've tried everything from the tap method to the massage method to the freezer method. Um, you name it, hard reset, soft reset, button hold, press, all this stuff. Um, it just doesn't come on. So let me know if you, had, if you know of anything. I would love to get it working again. So which brings me to the seller... So, Celero 5G. Uh, so again, brand new from Boost. Uh, I did come with the case, which is pretty cool. This was on special the other day for 80 bucks, so I, I jumped on it. Um, you know, I can't rationalize paying the Samsung iPhone prices. Uh, you know, a lot of people think that you're getting, 
And these are my opinions, of course. A lot of people think that when you spend that much money on a phone, that you're getting something that's really just a, a, a cut above the rest. Just like when I compare watches, you know, like buying a Rolex or an Invicta, you're getting something that's just night and day difference. And you're really not. I mean, um, a lot of manufacturers, a lot of cell companies are, are making you buy the phone now for an, an insane amount of money. Uh, and Boost Mobile has them too. Some of the iPhones are like 600 bucks. The new, one of the new phones that fold is like 600 bucks. Like no friggin' way am I paying that for a cell phone. Cell phones used to be free with the service. So now it's ridiculous that Boost Mobile is one of those few companies that <coughs> you can still get a fully featured phone uh, that you're not sacrificing. Like I think a lot of people think like, oh, when you get those prepaid $80 phones, you're really you're really getting just a really generic cheap phone. You're not. I remember one idiot at my local Boost Mobile, I called and I was having a problem with, again, the, the signal, and he's like, oh, well, you bought a cheap phone. It was about the cool pad. I was like, dude, this wasn't a cheap phone. This phone was like... $30 less than like the LG, you know, uh, he's just a jackass. Again, there are morons everywhere and people trying to sell you a bill of goods all the time. So do the research and know the difference. So let's talk about this one here. This is, um, I believe a phone made by Dish Network, if I, if I remember correctly, uh, for Boost Mobile. I believe it's the only place you can get this phone is through Boost Mobile. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the specifics. And I did a, uh, I went to nanoreview.net and they did a side-by-side -side comparison because uh, one of my, my, my biggest, and I'll show you more about the phone in a second. One of my biggest, um, I guess, concerns with upgrading or changing the phone out from the LG Stylo 6 was I really like the specs on the on the Stylo 6. So um, let me just, and what this website does, it gives you a side-by-side -side comparison for the chip, okay? And you can run this on any phone, on any microprocessor chip. Um, and I wanted to see, you know, did three years make that much of a difference? Are you getting an $80 uh, phone by... What is this company again? Celero 5G. Are you getting an $80 phone that really I'm gonna be, you know, they're using a generic dual core chip or something? Am I going back to four cores from the eight? Uh, what am I getting? So, so these this is a comparison between the Helio P35, which is the chip that's in the uh, the Stylo 6, versus the new chip that's in this phone is Dimensity 700. Uh, so it says here when comparing the two, these are both eight core processors. So that's one reason I went with this phone because it was still an eight core chip. Um, it says here MediaTek Helio P35 with the IMG Power VR GE 8320 graphics and the Dimensity 700 Mali G57 MC2. Here you find the two pros and cons of the chip tech specs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this basically gives you a rundown of uh, I guess this company probably tests microchips. And you get a really good, solid review of the differences. It really breaks it down. Now, all the, a lot of the stuff I don't understand, but I can I can see the difference on paper on which one's better or not. Uh, I let that let the company like this handle that, right? They'll tell you which what's, what's good and what isn't. So again, being very happy with the Stylo Six, the CPU performance of the Helio P35 and the Stylo Six that was rated at 19. It gives a, this company. Uh, Nano Review gives you a rating, gives you a, a score of 19. The Dimensity 700 rated at 40, so quite a difference already. Um, as far as gaming performance, it went from a from the LG, which was a 7, up to a 26. The battery life was extended from a 58 to 76, and the Nano Review scores, the overall chip score, went from a 24 up to a 44. So almost double that of uh, of of the. LG Steel 6. And again, the, mainly the key differences here that you get with upgrading to this phone is you're going to get a 5% higher CPU clock speed of a 2300 versus 2200 megahertz on the media, or on the, is that right? Yeah, on the MediaTek uh, Helo P35. So that's the one that's in the LG. So the LG does have a 5% higher clock speed, but that's the only perk you get out of that chip. When you go to the pros of the Mensity 700, this is what you're getting. Performance is 5.4 times better in a floating point computation. Uh, shows significant up to 2.8 times, uh, and it's called an AN22 score, uh, AN229 score, which is 334 versus 119. You know, again, I don't know what a lot of these mean, but it is better. Uh, has a smaller transistor, 7 versus 12 nanometers. Uh, higher GPU frequency, it says 40%. Uh, announced one year and one month later, one year and 11 months later, so it's a much newer chip. It supports a 15% higher memory bandwidth. Um, 
and it says better intrusion set architecture. So again, overall, there's a huge difference. It wasn't like one of these was just a little bit better. Uh, the overall score was a 44 versus a 24. And you can read more about this stuff. I encourage you to run your own, you know, um, uh, differences here on their website. Pretty handy website to have. So let's talk about, again, um, some of the other folks who've had this. I haven't seen a lot of YouTubers reviewing this. One guy did a lot of game testing and he says it was phenomenal for the price point, uh, the, the amount of processing power and gaming power this has. No, I don't game. I just use mine like, you know, web surfing information. But, you know, I figure if it's good for gaming, it's going to be good for everything else. You know, gaming is what's really resource hungry. So uh, he had nothing but great things to say about it. Let me just pop the cover off here. Um, I am pretty happy that they gave me a, a, a case with it. I don't know if you'll get a case with it if you order it. It wasn't, I didn't mention Fat Cat Collections or anything. I just ordered it in my real name. Uh, they sent the case. So pretty cool. Uh, the case, you know, it's pretty basic, just clear. Uh, shows off the phone, protects the phone, right? Um, one thing I was kind of concerned with with getting this phone is the feel. What do you feel in your hands when you hold this? When I compare phones like... Uh, Here's my ZTE Max, right? Still a nice phone, but there is a little bit of cheapness that you feel with the ZTE uh, and also with the cool pad. It just seems a little more plasticky. Um, again, works fine. Nothing wrong with it. It was a you know quad-core processor. Still great for what I do, uh, but it just feels like a slightly cheaper phone. Screen size is the same, but what they've done is they made the case a lot smaller. The screen comes right to the edge on this phone for the most part. I'll show you in a second. And, of course, um, um, there's a lot more metal on it. So when you feel this phone, this feels very comparable to what you feel when you grab an iPhone and very comparable to what you feel when you held the Stylo 6. Now, I do think the Stylo 6 just feels a little bit better in the hand to me. Um, they're both very similar, but it just feels a little bit... I don't know. I just kind of like the smoothness and the rounded edges on the Stylo um, or the Stylo. I always say it wrong. Uh, but this is still an amazing phone. Um, it has kind of this weird kind of iridescent silver back, which almost looks like there's a curve to the phone. Uh, there isn't. It's just the way they've they've designed it. Uh, pretty similar to the mirror back on the Stylo. When you look at size comparison, uh, the Stylo has a slightly larger screen, I believe at about 5 point, is it 5.7, I think, is what it was. Uh, let me just take a quick peek here. Probably should have pulled this up before I started the video, right? Uh, but that's all right. Boost Mobile, let's go there. Android phones. It's, it's, I never prepare for video, so. <laughs> uh, ch -ch -ch. All right, so let me go down to, open this one up here right quick. All right, so uh, the screen size, I believe is six, I'm sorry, 6.7. On the uh, the the Solero, it's 6.5 inches, so um, slightly larger screen. Which again, you know, in today's world of bigger is better. Um, you know, it I, I do wish it had a bigger screen, but uh, when you compare the phone side by side, let me show you from the back here because this is this isn't really a screen comparison because they're both off, but you can kind of see the size differences here. Hopefully, you can see the size difference. One just a little bit. Ah, sorry, guys. A little tiny bit, a little tiny bit longer. Not by much, very comparable in size. And what I like about this phone is that the screen size, although it's still six and a half like the ZTE, they've made it more of a six and a half long as opposed to, uh, or more of like a widescreen as opposed to more square. Um, what I like about that, it just fits in your hand a little bit better. Um, I hope they come out with something even larger. I'd like to see a seven inch screen, but I don't know. It seems like 6.7 is the largest I've seen in a lot of phones. So uh, price point is right now went up to 139. I got it for 80 bucks, which is incredible. You do get a 16 megapixel camera, 45 hours of talk time. That's where you get a real difference with this new chip compared to the uh, Stylo. Uh, the talk time is way better. Uh, storage on it, 64 gigs, which I've upgraded to. Uh, I put a I think a 128 gigabyte card in here as well. Might be. It might even be a. Is it two something? Anyway, it'll take up to, I think, two terabytes. Android 11, and you do get four gigs of RAM as opposed to three gigs, which is pretty cool. Uh, more RAM, I mean, that's one of the most important things, in my opinion, you could have in a phone. Um, I've had phones at two gigs, and it's it's a little choppy, you know. When you start getting a whole bunch of things on there, four gigs, you're not going to have any problems. Uh, so let me read you a little bit more about the specs, and I encourage you guys to click the link, check the description, and see what you think about it, or see, you know, see what you think about the specs. You might know more about this than I do. 
Uh, I'm not going to read you the dimensions, a lot of stuff you can just check out. The main things on this, again, MediaTek TK5, T, T, MTK 5GC. Again, that's what it says on their website, but when I did the cross-reference, I got Dimensity 700. So uh, if I am wrong, please correct me because I bought it under those pretenses. Um, 4 gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of ROM with a micro SD card storage up to 2 terabytes. 45 hours talk time, 4,000 milliamp lithium ion battery. It is not removable. Six, 16 megapixel camera, 5 megapixel ultra wide, 2 megapixel, 2 megapixel depth, triple rear camera system, 8 megapixel front camera. So you can see that triple camera system. Um, a lot of that stuff goes right over my head. I don't know what any of that means. Uh, but, you know, for me, I, I don't really, I don't read up on all this stuff because I don't really. Um, you know, I'm not super techie when it comes to my phones. All I want the thing to do is really operate right, be fast, feel good, and, and be, you know, reliable. So, uh, music on this, as far as the sound quality speaker, nothing to write home about. You know, you have one single speaker. Uh, you can set it for mono or stereo. I don't see the point in having it stereo anyway, because it's only one speaker. USB-C connection, uh, uh, 3.5 millimeter jack. I believe it has two microphones, so one on top, one on bottom. Again, I like the fact they put everything in one corner there, uh, although I don't really think it makes much of a difference. What I really like about this phone, too, is that all the buttons are on one side. So your volume up and down, and then your fingerprint sensor is integrated into the button on the side. So that's really cool. Um, and you can see the screen. I'm not going to show you everything on here. We don't want, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, overall, I'm really happy with it. Um, another thing that I, this phone has and you might know about um, is that one thing I didn't like about it was where your finger is here, it's pretty easy when you're holding it to just kind of run your finger over the unlock button. Um, I kind of wish they would have put that button on the opposite side and used a thumbprint sensor. Uh, but... Uh, or maybe put that on the top. I just feel like on the side there, although I do like it more than on the back, I don't think it makes much of a difference having the fingerprint sensor off to the back or, or versus the side. And when I first got it, I said, oh, that's really great that they put it right there on the side. But to me, I now that I have it, I do prefer it on the back. And I think really it would have been much better having it on top. Um, but, you know, it is personal preference. I just find that when I'm just kind of holding the phone, I keep rubbing my finger over that. So, um, you know, not a huge deal. When you go throwing a case on it, it is going to recess it a little bit. Let me pop this back in the case and I'll show you. Pretty nice case they gave me with this. I'm not sure, again, if, if, if it was just something that, that was a promotion. I don't know if, if you buy it, you'll get it. I'm sure a lot of people got it. Maybe it's just kind of a one-time thing. Not sure, but I do like how it's recessed. And a lot of the cases I've seen on eBay and Amazon for this phone are recessed as well, which helps to kind of prevent your finger from hitting it. But again, you know, we all kind of hold our phones like this, right? And it's pretty easy to accidentally hit that button. But, um, you know, not a huge deal. But I, I, after having it, I do prefer it on the back. But, uh, you know, they're always changing things up. It's just personal preference. They all seem to work. But overall, I'm really happy with uh, the performance. Um, the only thing that I don't like with a lot of these phones is that a lot of times I like to keep my ringer on high and my notifications uh, on, you know, really soft or on mute because when you have cameras and all these different apps and social media, the thing just never, it never shuts up, right? So I'd like to be able to turn those things down. Uh, the problem with this is when you turn those down, you turn your ring volume up. And I really like my ring volume max because I rarely get phone calls. And when I do, it seems like I always miss the phone call because my phone's on silent. Uh, with this phone, it's not an individual adjustment. It's alerts and ringtone. Real bummer for me because it's something I can't stand. The LG had two separate buttons or two separate controls for that. Volume for ringtone only and then everything else. Your you know, your your music and then of course your uh, your notifications, which again, not the end of the world, but it is something that um, I do find a little bit annoying. Um, not a lot of blowware on this and the blowware that is on the phone, you can very easily remove. I think you just had a few Boost Mobile apps that I took off there uh, and that's about it. Otherwise, it's pretty much uh, bare bones operating system. So pretty cool. I like the phone and you really can't beat the price. So uh, that's it guys. I just want to give you, again, there's lots of other dudes who review this stuff in more in depth who know a lot more than me. I just want to give you my everyday average Joe review. Um, I'm really happy with it. If you are in the market for a Boost Mobile uh, phone or if you are in the market for service, I would check out Boost Mobile. Again, uh, despite my little coverage area, I am pretty happy with the phone. I am pretty happy with the service. Um, just keep in mind, customer service, 
you know, a lot of times there is a little bit of a language barrier there depending on who you deal with. And a lot of times, and this can be said for a lot of companies, um, you're not really talking to somebody in the United States. And a lot of times they want to walk you through, if you do have a problem, they want to walk you through all the same old things that you may have done a hundred times, right? So just kind of keep that in mind. But, you know, it's working great. It's working and most time it is. Um, again, I haven't had really any issues. Uh, the only thing I would say about Boost is that what they've done uh, is that Boost, and I don't think this phone has it. My LG had uh, hotspot connectivity. You can uh, send out your your uh, your Wi-Fi to like my car stereo. This phone I don't believe has that, but I didn't check into the phone. Um, with Boost Mobile, they changed when they went from Virgin to Boost. For those of you who have phones that are hotspot capable, you got a free Wi-Fi hotspot. For those um, and under Virgin, you got free roaming. So. I found on the Virgin the signal was a lot better. Once it went over to Boost, that roaming feature went away. Uh, I believe you can pay for roaming, but it's not included. So I don't know. I think I'm saying that right. But uh, anyway, if you guys have any questions, let me know. I'm always here to help. Overall, though, I like the phone. I'm happy with it. I encourage you to check it out if you're in the market. Uh, and if I can help in any way, again, let me know. Drop me a comment. Drop me an email. As always, guys, subscribe to the channel and take care.